Hello Capricorn friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Capricorn July 2022 Astrology Must Knows Horoscope Forecast. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. That is the interface for all the free goodies they make for you each month. And if you forget that address by the time we're done, you can just click on the little arrow button underneath if you're watching on YouTube to reveal the notes that says more there. Or you can look at the notes underneath the podcast if you're listening that way. This is for you if Capricorn is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other placement that you are watching for for Capricorn. Also know that I have very strong Capricorn placements. So when I am reading the Capricorn report, I am doing it with an an awareness of cap energies from the perspective of experience. So that is always very exciting to bring to the table. If you are a late degree Capricorn, like my moon is in, so basically if you are, let's see, 23 degrees to the rest of the sign, so like January 13th through the rest of the sign, I also suggest you listen to my Aquarius report. You late degree friends can benefit from both readings because you will have goodies in there for each of you. Okay, so what's going on in July? We've got a very, very, very busy astrological astrological month, but it's busy in a different way than what we've just stepped out of. We've just stepped out of eclipse season. Eclipse season was super anxiety ridden and for better and worse, it was very, very intense. We had that super crazy emotional blood moon Scorpio eclipse in May that echoed out even into June. And now we've got the first full month out of eclipse season. So yay, we are in a break in July and August in the first part of September between the eclipse seasons. And so we've got a time to rest, to breathe, and to integrate the changes that came and to prepare for any changes that may come in the future. So that's a big must know. We've got a ton of planetary connections in the sky this month. Like I said, we've got a very busy sky. So there are actually like around 10 more aspects that I'm looking at for the planets that we're talking about compared to previous times. So it's been just a little bit lighter, except for the eclipses, but as far as the connections in the sky, but now this month it's just like bam, 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 connections all over the place. There are more of those that are salty compared to sweet, but we still have at least 11 beautiful aspects that I'm looking through or looking at that are going to be showing up. So there's 11 chances for extra kisses and 11 chances for beautiful, harmonious things to to occur. So let's see what else. Yeah, so we are in a time, it's very big must know, that the tides are flowing out. It hasn't happened a lot this year. And once we're up to August 21st, we're going to be in a time when the tides are flowing in. So if you don't know what I mean by that, if you're not familiar with my terminology, when personal planets are retrograde, so Mercury, Mars, Venus, those energies bring us more inward and backward. And it's like water coming in, the tide coming in. So it's not, retrogrades are not a time for trying to push your boat out to sea. But July and August is not a time of retrogrades. So July and August is a time to push your boat out to sea. Okay, so basically just think about your project or what you're trying to do. Do you want it to go far and wide with less effort? Then it's a thing to do in July and August, okay? Because once we get into the retrogrades, the tide's coming in. So it's better to work on things internally, to experiment, to try things on, to do little practice things or beta things, or just like gather information and research, or to just keep doing what you're doing, or to edit the things that you've already done. Not the time for big, shiny new things and it might be a little harder to make some plans and October and November are going to be particularly dicey because of that last Saturn Uranus clash that we've been working with so you know this is really a time where it's not those times (laughs) so this is the time for big actions big decisions new jobs big agreements contracts investments you know and although we've got you know a lot of annoying nuisance energies The only one of them that's kind of a big one, which is one that we'll talk about that's on July 1st, but for the rest of the month, all the rest of the bumps are just kind of just like nuisance little things. The vision that I'm getting for this month or the the image that I'm getting for this month is it's sunny, okay? So the sun is representing all the nice aspects. It's raining, it's a sun shower, okay? There's still some rain, okay? Those are the dicey aspects. There's prizes that you're running towards, maybe the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and people are throwing vegetables at you okay so you you can see that i watch a lot of shows taking you know place in the period of time where for whatever different reasons people threw vegetables at other people and this is on my mind okay and it is like that so as you're running through this beautiful sun shower 
you towards your prize, you're going to be pelted with vegetables. And those are the dicey aspects, okay? So, but you can do it and you can get there and you, you've got a lot of zest and you've got the best forward movement and it's just kind of expect that things are going to come flying at you and just deal with it and get through it. And since you know what's happening beforehand, because I'm telling you, then you'll just know and that will be what happens. But you still wanna take advantage of this open window that starts June 19th and goes through August 21st because we're not going to have another one like it until 2023. Okay, now it doesn't mean you can't do anything until 2023, of course. And there are a lot of things that the retrogrades are good for, but you know, if you've gotta make a big announcement, if you're trying to publish something, if you're bringing your life's work out, if, you're trying, if your new business is ready, you know, if, if anything that you can get with these good energies you want at weddings, big you know plans, trips, this is a time when you have a lot of extra support so you'll want to take advantage of it. Okay, so let's get into that annoying aspect that I was alluding to. The one biggest dicey thing that we have to watch out for the month, July 1st and the days at the end of June and the days in the first week of you know, July, Mars and Pluto are getting together in a not great aspect, a square, a point of conflict. Mars, the god of war, in its sign that it rules, Aries, also god of war, and in conflict with Pluto, you know, the great transformer, ruler of birth, death, transformation, the phoenix rising from the ashes in the stern sign of Capricorn. That doesn't sound great, does it? Now, that is like official hide under a rock type of um, transit. But we do have some really nice aspects in the first week as well that could bring points of grace. And just remember that these astrological transits are like pockets of influence. So like you could be in, in the water and there could be, you know, in the ocean, we'll say, and there's like a cold current and there's a warm current. And maybe your arm is in the warm current and your leg is in the cold current. You can see these things are happening and influencing at the same time. So they're both true. They're both true at the same time. And if you find that you're like in this really good patch and things are flowing, then don't worry about this aspect. Just go, you know, just have extra care and awareness. But people are going to be on edge. Things that haven't been said that have been building up and repressed are going to bust out. You know, anything having to do with conflicts or fighting or arguments or people becoming unhinged, those things are going to happen. People are going to be driving like burp, beep, won't say the word, but that's gonna be happening, you know, and just extra care and, or, or not care and aggression is going to be occurring. So you don't wanna antagonize a crazy person. If you haven't been in a safe situation and somebody is volatile around you, you wanna get out before this aspect happens. Try to get to a safe place. I mean, hopefully you will be making a plan to get out anyway, but this is a time where if things are tend to be like that, they're more likely to be like that, okay? So just kind of be warned and be safe. And accidents and, you know, just general chaos is, is happening. So this energy is going to bring some extra focus on the home and family for uh, Capricorn placements because Mars is going to be in that place, okay? So you versus your family, housing, landlord, tenant type of things, those are more likely to come up at this time. Okay, so the next big must know is that we have a super moon this month. We had one in June as well, June 14th, and then we have a second one here, July 13th, and the days around it, you'll be feeling it. Probably even a wider orb, you'll be feeling it than usual full moons. If you are aware of your connection to the moon and how you tend to feel, usually I feel the full moon two to three days ahead. Super moons, more likely to feel a week ahead, four or five days, certainly. And, you know, so the insomnia, the agitation, the excitement, you know, all of that, you're going to be feeling it. So now you know why when it happens, that's what's going on. But this is a super moon, full moon in your sign. So whenever we have something like that, that's personal to us, it makes it a bigger deal. So completion, fruition, drama, accomplishment, all happening in the energy of Capricorn. So work, employment, um, recognition for something that you're doing, attention, being thrown into the limelight, all of that is more likely at this time. There could be conflicts, um, but there also could be, like I said, accomplishment. So, you know, this is a very, very busy supermoon as well. There are a ton of aspects occurring on the same day. Some really great, some kind of challenging. So it's just kind of a big intense time that you're going to be feeling. It will be highly emotional because a super moon happens when the moon is closer to the earth. So it looks bigger because it is bigger because it is closer. Well, not that it's bigger, but you know, we have the perception of it because, because it's there 
closer to our field and the gravitational pull is higher. So water where it shouldn't be emotionally or literally is more of an increase in odds. You know, so just something to be aware of. Now all caps can see all of the goodies or challenges that can come from this. But those of us who have placements near 21 degrees, so we'll go five degrees in each direction. So 16 degrees through 26 degrees, the closer to 21 degrees, the more intensity that you will have at this full moon for better or worse. And so 16 degrees is like January 16th through the rest of the sign. Um, 20 or actually January 6th through the rest of the sign. Um, and then the closer to January 11th, the more you will get this exact um, this exact hit. And if you don't know your degrees and you want to know your degrees, that is a reason to get a free birth chart, which you get when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So when you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and you sign up for the newsletter, there will be instructions in the welcome letter as to how to access the software because you can definitely benefit from knowing more about your chart because I give you the details to utilize that information. Okay, so friends near 21 degrees, Look out, this is a very, very, very big, powerful time for you. For many of us, it's going to be very big work breakthroughs or something for a life project. Remember that when I talk about work, if you're a person that isn't working or doesn't need to work, this can be your workout in the world that you don't need money for. This is like a project. This is like what you're giving to the world, where you're showing up with your gifts, what, how you're interfacing with the outer, you know, the public or the outer realms. This could be politics. This could be, you know, anything that kind of puts you in a sphere where people are looking at you or what you're doing. Okay, so the next big must know is that we've got a lot of cancer energies. So you may or may not know that cancer energies oppose your sign. Okay, so every year at this time, there are these 180 degree angles being made that push and pull. They bring up the topics of me versus we very strongly. So you and your stuff, you know, people, other people and their stuff, your relationships, your identity, their identity, your partnership, your connections, you know, codependency, interdependency, independence, all of those topics are very, very strong when we have oppositions like this. And the sun plus other planets moving through the seventh house are going to bring a spotlight to your relationships. They're going to show you what's really working and show you what's not working. There might be points of conflict when you see those things that are not working but alongside with the conflict you might have the light go on as to how you're going to resolve the problems okay so this is a very good time for solving problems and it's a very good time for having clarity as to what those problems are so that you can actually solve them so that's happening now you might find that people in your life need a lot more attention at this time because of the emotional energies and remember cancer rules home family housing real estate so your family may need things from you or you may lean on your family you know there's a lot of energy of you showing up for family members and them showing up for you and your interrelations at this time but those relationships can also be ones that aren't your family because the seventh house is being highlighted and that is any type of relationship if you have to move or sell or buy a house this is an amazing time for that okay so we also still have energy in Gemini. Venus and Mercury are still moving through Gemini. And for you, this is highlighting your house of health. You might be having some indecision or some information gathering. Remember that Mercury rules Gemini and Gemini energy is here and Mercury energy is here. So the topic of research is coming up, researching health things, researching systems, researching job opportunities. You might find that you're gathering a lot of information and this could be learning, you know, education, but a lot of this could be more researching about trying to make a decision about something. You also might be researching getting a pet. Okay, and this could be an amazing time to get a pet. There's a lot of really good energy around long-term, you know, pet relationships at this time. There is a little bit of awkwardness to this angle for Capricorn, so it might mean that you have to work hard with what you're doing or put some extra effort into it, you know, or kind of push through some resistance. And there might be some conflicts at work or whoever is in your daily routine or sphere, you might see that there's a lot of information coming in. You have to do a lot of communication. You might, you know, feel like for some with some people, you're like ships passing in the night where you're like not getting what people are saying and they're not getting you. There's a little bit of that awkwardness going on. Okay, so another big must know is that we also have very strong Leo energy, which is 
taking shape after the planets move into Cancer, but we are starting this at the end of the month. So, you know, the picture at the end of the month is very different. The last 10, you know, seven to 10 days or so is very different than the, the prior part of it. You know, we've got the, the strong and possibly heavy emotions of the um, Cancer placements. And then it turns into this zesty, sparkly, passionate, you know, um, energies. Now for Capricorn, both Cancer and Leo rule your partnership houses. So you're going to have both the, you know, the emotional and the zesty, um, and both the maybe conflictive and then restorative energies in your partnership place. If you're seeking to partner with people or have some kind of synergy or working on a project with some, you know, close close people a group or you know an entity you know like a, a corporation or a, whatever it is there's a lot of energy around that starting for you in july and it will be strong in august taxes debt inheritances wills you know contracts where you are merging with someone or making a deal with somebody those energies are going to be very strong especially starting at the end of the month and fortunately we are still in a time where we're in the open window so if you you know it's a good time for negotiating and a good time for contracts and trying to make you know make something a very powerful connection with someone where you're creating hopefully something even more wonderful than the sum of your two parts coming together okay so let's see um The Mars energy moving through your fourth house is going to make a lot of people very restless. So you might find that this lends itself towards travel, okay? Because even though, you know, some of the more obvious travel placements aren't as activated at this moment, people with these, with, you know, Capricorn placements are going to feel this restlessness. Some of you might feel like you want to move, you have to move, like literally move houses. but. Some of us are really just going to feel like, ah, I gotta get out of here. I have to go do something. I have to, you know, take a trip or, or something like that. Or spruce up your house. The energy could be manifesting that way where you're like, oh, I'm home, I'm restless, let's fix things up. And it is a great time for that. Small and big house projects are perfect at this time. So you might be finding that you're very hot on a topic where you're doing something to improve your home or improve your living circumstance or something with houses or housing. And that energy can also be going towards your family. Um, and sometimes those two are related. Okay, so the last big must know is that Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, the big expander, the bringer of optimism and benevolence is going retrograde. So July 28th through November 23rd, Jupiter will be offline. That could start to shift some things with international travel, that could start to you know, immigration things, things that were moving forward might start to come to a halt. So again, with the house projects or the homes or the housing or things like that, you want to try to do as much of this forward moving things with your home stuff in July. Because once Jupiter goes retrograde, even though we still have some open stars in August, you're not going to have as much momentum when Jupiter is going backwards, okay? So just kind of expect that house, homing, you know, moving, maybe jobs related that you would be moving for a job, immigration, education, something like those kind of things, teaching, learning, those types of things might start to come to a halt or have some confusion cast into them or have, you know, just be slowing down or feel like you're being ghosted, that people are not being forthcoming with information that's relevant to the expansion of these sort of topics. And just know that it might be because Jupiter going into retrograde. So Jupiter is still giving blessings and expansion when it's in retrograde, but sometimes it's not as evident. Okay, so Jupiter turns its work more internally at this time and in the behind the scenes arena. So let's say you're working on this big expansion. Well, if your foundation isn't very strong, then when you keep going higher, your building is going to crumble because you didn't have a strong enough foundation. So it's purposeful that, you know, for four months at a time, Jupiter goes retrograde. And then it stops the expansion, checks everything. Okay, we good for expansion. What do we need to go further? What do we, you know, what do we have to do? And then you just do those things and you're just working more in the backdrop and Jupiter's working more in the backdrop. And so you'll see a lot of things come that were zesty, kind of maybe coming to a slowdown. And now you know why. 
Okay, so overall a super busy month. I think, you know, there has a lot of positive energy. There's also one more must know, July 17th and 18th. There's this beautiful um, water trine and being an earth placement, you have even more chances for kisses from this and all Capricorn placements have a chance to have extra intuition, you know, extra creativity, beautiful emotional connections and spiritual insights. Um, in the days around July 17th and 18th and kind of a few days before and after there. And those of you who are close to 25 degrees, so our late degree friends, so basically 20 to 29 degrees, so that's going to be like July, or I'm sorry, um, January uh, 10th through the rest of the sign, and the closer you are to January 15th, the more you get a kiss from this particular aspect. Okay, so I've given you lots to work with to help you make the most of the energies this month and to help you understand the energetic patterns at work and play. And if you'd like more resources, I've got all of these here. You can additionally go to the little more button, the little arrow underneath the bottom right of the video, click on that, and all of the links that I'm giving you here will be clickable, right? So if you're looking for reading options, including a beautiful, very detailed 45 minute audio of your birth chart for $33 from my brilliant husband, you can find that at AnnieBClarity.com. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. This is where you can access running a free birth chart. This is where you access my 28 day in-depth virtual coaching program called Shine for free. This is also where you'll find tons of blogs and you get lots of other perks for being on my newsletter list. If you're looking for written horoscopes by me, always up a month early, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. If you haven't seen this site, go to it. It is so beautiful. We've got me and my team have lots of amazing astrology inspired blogs and healthy living blogs. We've got hypnosis for all the signs. We've got healing frequencies for all the signs. I've got the written horoscopes that I write. We have yoga for all the signs. So it's just a very beautiful comprehensive site. If you're looking for free courses on how to manifest money and um, wellness you can go to loomlife.com, my school, Luminous Life Multiversity, L-U-M-L-I-F-E. You can also find my astrology education courses here, including my behemoth of a master course called Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course, which you can fully utilize even if you don't want to be a professional astrologer, but it certainly will get you up to the level where you could be and show you how to make your business a success. And payment plans are available there too. Now, I've also got two books out and more on the way, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. You will find this on the bookshelves in all major booksellers, including all the books a million, all the Barnes and Nobles. It's right there on the shelf. Plus, you can get it on Amazon and through any independent bookseller. And you can find Radical Prayer on Amazon and you can order it anywhere as well. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.